afternoon. I know that's uh, like a long day, and uh, I believe there weren't too many talks, and hopefully that you are able to focus a little bit with me. So, uh, my name is Hussein Araki. I'm coming from the Swiss National Supercomputing Center. So, if, uh, you know, if you have no idea where this place is, it's in the southern part of, uh, of, uh, of Lugano. Uh, it's in the southern part of Switzerland, and um, we are, and that's what we'll start with, actually talking about a little bit about, about CSCS. So um, the rest is that because of timing, I'm going to just skip, let's say, use this stuff, or at least not, not too um, very important. Um, I will mention about this, what's HPCCH, a little bit, talk about it, and then the rest will be talking about this project that we'll be working at. Okay, so CSCS, Swiss National Open Computing Center, southern part of Switzerland, where we speak Italian. And uh, I believe many of um, familiar faces have been in, in Lugano. I, uh, we had like an event last uh, in April uh, where many HPC now were there. And um, so founded in, in 1991, couple of thoughts about CSCS, otherwise they will never allow me to, to go anywhere else, you know. Definitely have to talk about them. Um, um, this, is, this is our building, you know, and behind it, this is a machine room. And we'll talk a little bit about it. Um, uh, it's part of ETH. ETH is a Polytechnique of Zurich. And um, we are operated by, by ETH Zurich. And we are funded by, uh, by the ETH, and which is like one of the departments. Um, located in Lugano. OK, so when, um, when we talk about research centers, you know, the first thing, time back, back with the early ages, we used to talk about the machine. How big is our machine? And, you know, flops. And this is vector machine, parallel machine. And they started in at CSCS 2001. So that's a long time ago. But now, these days, if you go to a research center, the first thing they will ask about is power. And the second is how you are cooling your machine. And what's the infrastructure? So, uh, so that's why I, I took this part actually about this machine and I want to talk about it because I found that that's still fascinating. This is our machine, machine room, 2,000 square meters. So it's like, it's like uh, the same, the same like um, football field. This is the size. And what you can see here, these are from where we are pumping the water to cool the machine the entire machine. So we have like three circuits internally, the main one that comes from the lake, and we are around like, what, three, four kilometers from far from the lake. So we pump the water at 40 meters, and this is where you have six degrees Celsius, is a fixed um, temperature, even during summer or winter. And we take it down to CSCS, we cool the second circuit, that will cool the third circuit, and that's where we cool all our uh, computers. Or also, this is free of cooling. And the only thing we pay is just these pumps. And I can tell you, this is a lot of water. This is the maximum, it's like 700 liters per second these pumps could, could just deliver. And we have only one standby. Now, the way back, this water, so, you know, imagine how much, you know, um, uh, we had discussions about, you know, how much is going to change the ecosystem in the lake. And we need to guarantee that the water comes to the surface at 25 degrees cannot be higher, and that's coming to the surface. So maybe, I think during winter, you can swim around this area, you know, where, where the water comes a little bit warm. Okay, um, that's, I think that's all about, about CSS. That's the first part about CSS. The second part, it was this about HPC advisory. So this event, it's a technical event, three days. It's not marketing about the HPC advisory, but I wanted to take from it really the, um, uh, it was like reflecting a little bit about the kind of talks we had during this event. So we had the three intensive working days, similar to have like, we had two days here, we had three days, and they were like all kind of, of technical uh, talks. So there were six presentations about, uh, about containers and about Docker and integration HPC. And I start making this percentage, how many talks about, about what was the most important topic that covered these three working days. And it was about, you know, uh, containers and, and uh, you know, part of it Kubernetes, but that was like the most important topic we covered. And that's made me, okay, I mean, why, why this is becoming quite interesting in, in this uh, HPC world, actually, because this is an event that we only deal with, you know, with HPC technical stuff, sometimes scientific talks. So there were like uh, 
stuff that's like here we're talking about developing. Okay, CSCS is leading this part, so we'll see three talks from CSCS. One of them is just like uh, talking about developing cloud native HPC cluster at CSCS. This is was, um, I think uh, Alberto Madonna, he gave it, and he showed a native performance on containers compared to bare metal. So that he ran some um, MPI stuff and he got exactly the same performance you get it from a bare metal. And you know, a machine that has like interconnect with delivering 23, 25 gigabyte, gigabyte per second bandwidth, he was able to show that in containers. And the second top, the second part, this is, I believe you are familiar with it, this is do it now. And it was interesting summary of all the containers and different between them. The third part, um, that's about performance container also. And here I have like the three topics. One of them that I'm going to recover again. And these are the next two um, topics. Well, this is Alberto Madonna. Here's this fabric. I believe I mixed it with, um, with a topic from our colleague. His name is Felipe Cruz. So, so why I'm talking about all of this? I mean, why I'm mentioning these and discovering, talking about this, all of this? So CSS itself, we are moving in three different directions. One has to do with containers. So the first one is that, that uh, presented by Alberto Madonna, where we are talking about this native performance between bare metal and containers. And this is, we have, I believe we have success. We have a production, we have a product in production developed at CSS. However, that product doesn't have an orchestration at the top of it. So it is like, you know, you are dealing with, uh, with let's say, uh, Singularity or uh, Docker. This is called Saros and doesn't, ha doesn't have, like at the top of it, this orchestrator. Now the second solution, which is, um, the, uh, I, did not find, I did not put the name, which is here, the Felipe Cruz. What we are doing, we are doing here is building um, the, um, Offering services for uh, HPC machine from um, a container environment. And there we have an orchestration. And here we are using for the first time Nomad as an orchestrator. And if you are not familiar with Nomad, Nomad allows you to run services, a containerized services and a non containerized services. So both of them, that will allow you to do that. And that's where you can gain a lot of sim simplicity compared to Docker and other. Um, uh, you know, orchestrator. That's the, um, and this is this has been presented recently last week at CAG in Finland. If you are not familiar with CAG, it's a Cray users group, and I believe a lot of big sites have been shown interest in this nomad because <clears throat> the way it's going, it's quite quite impressive and interesting. And the third one is that what we are talking about is this the mimic HPC workload in Kubernetes. And this is uh, just. Um, giving, giving um, what we are doing here, we are running Slurm inside, inside uh, Kubernetes, and that's what we'll be covering later. So we have these three directions of you know, dealing with workload on HPC, and, uh, and the talk before me, just like they wanted to take the HPC to cloud. I mean, it was interesting to hear that, but I would tell him, we wanted to bring cloud to HPC. You know, instead taking to uh, HPC to cloud, and that's where all this work is going. Because we wanted to offer what they are offering, you know, as a cloud and automation to users. We want to offer that to our HPC users and gain additional user, which is the cloud user, and guarantee the HPC workload. And that's why we are just focusing on all of this. That's why we are like showing all of this and having three different projects in HPC, because if giants like Google, Amazon, take the HPC and to the cloud. I don't know how much space research centers, I mean like ours or others, will be able to continue because that's where you have everything available there. You can, still we can argue about security, we can argue about data, we can argue about a lot of things and the cost itself. But that's why we have, that's where conversion is there. Okay, so that's the first part. Now the, the project that we we have been working at it. This has been developed, part, the biggest part of it was developed by uh, Manuel Sopena, so he's, he's not here, so that's why I'm just going to handle it and discuss it, so maybe not, I don't have technically covering all the details here. However, one, one main reason of, uh, or the motivation behind this project, it was like, you know, imagine you have, you wanted to have a Slurm environment for a developer, 
and you want to have that out of the box in a very fast time. That's how that you can replicate that. And that's where it came. So we, we rely on namespaces and where your Slurm environment will go in a namespace. And it's completely separate from other namespaces. So in every namespace, you can have a Slurm cluster. Now, how that could be done in an HPC world, what we do, the, um, the, the full context of it, it comes from, from the machine itself. So we are, we are talking here about the new machine. It's called Alps. I don't have the design of this machine. This, uh, this is um, the new machine that we are, we are deploying at CSCS. So it has two parts. It has a part we call it the managed part and the part we call the management part. The management part is that where, um, where admins of the machine, which is the infrastructure, he can access it. And there you can create what we call it a V cluster or even B meter clusters. So in that part of the machine, what we do, we have Kubernetes running and all services are running there. So when, for example, if I have Slurm, I could just allocate for, um, for customer X a set of nodes, 10, 16, 32, whatever, and I create a namespaces and put Slurm there. The components, which is are Slurm control D and database, and that's it. Now, when that, mesh, when that cluster will come up, it will run only Slurm D and communicate with the Slurm control D and daemon that's running in Kubernetes itself. And then you are up and running. So every V cluster has its own namespace and has its own environment. And that's why everything is going in this um, management part. While the managed part, what the user will see, he will only deal with running some jobs in, uh, in that cluster without, without dealing with all, let's say, the higher level. So that's why. Now, what's, that's, um, that's the context of the infrastructure of this machine. Now, what comes to here, what we do, we uh, inside, uh, we, what we do, we separate two things. We, we decide, let's say, half of these nodes will be using Slurm, that's managed by the management part, and the second half will be deploying Kubernetes. And the way we deploy Kubernetes, we use Rancher, and that's, I can tell you in five minutes, you have Kubernetes up and running, where we just create a cluster, and you go to each node, and just you submit it, just one command to connect to this cluster, and you are up and running. So that's where that Kubernetes deployed. On this V cluster, we, we run at the top of it the Slurm. So what we have, so now it's making things complicated a little bit. So we have half of the cluster is Slurm. This is bare metal. And then we have the second half where we have Kubernetes. And inside this Kubernetes, we create our own Slurm. And this is Slurm that we create inside it users could create it. Users could deal with everything inside it. They can be admin, they can be root, they can do whatever, they can do whatever they want. So replicating Slurm, this is part of the, um, it was not meant to be honest as, uh, as a real uh, a production environment. So we made it as R&D. We wanted to have you know, an environment that it is, um, in a short time, we can have it up and running. Um, we wanted to have uh, um, really replicate it and run some, um, you know, uh, run some MPI there. And yeah, at the beginning, we, we, did, not, we were, did not care about performance because we wanted only to have um, running some MPI to see functionality starting with simple, simple hello words, but with time we found that, no, it's important to see how we can benefit from this hardware. You know, this machine, this slingshot has, has interconnect. This is, by the way, the interconnect of, of this machine, it's customized by HPE Cray, so it has 400 gigabit interconnect between nodes, and it has multiple interfaces in it, so you have like you have big, that's why it's very important to be able to benefit from all of this, and that's why HPC workload is fundamental for us on it. But since it's at the beginning, it was only for testing purpose, so we did not have like, it's, it's very important for us a performance. Uh, it's only functionality. SSH to the pod, 
you know, and that means in, in Kubernetes, you want to have like a load balancer. In this case, we use Metal LB, so at least you will have, you know, you can have direct access to, uh, to every pod. Security, you know, it's always with these kind of things, it's a big, big challenge. And that will be coming later because, you know, you're giving privilege. Oh my gosh, I have five minutes. So, uh, yeah, I think that, 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 that that's the idea is more important than the technical details, I believe, because if we have, if we just understand why we are doing it and why this concept, and the rest is just technical details, that's fine. So these are components of, uh, of Slurm. We are running the, the containers, actually they are just running um, uh, a, a normal, let's say a full OS, I can tell you. And here we have been using, I mean, Rocky, uh, I tested Rocky 9.1, CentOS, and, um, and with, um, with, um, with System Control D is just part that's very important for us because we wanted to guarantee that in these containers I can start, I can just fire these uh, demons and control them in, in a very valuable way. Okay, so um, uh, this is part of this, this discussion about, about, you know, um, system containers, application containers. That's part about motivating why really we have been, been doing that. You know, an application used to be one container, one application, or one process, but then we'll find with time that's really not, is it, this is the way we want to keep it. We can do a lot of these things inside it. I could just um, take Slurm itself and you could argue with it, yes, is it, is it the right solution for being, to run in a container? Slurm is a complicated application, and if you want to run it and uh, take um, you know, advantage of all its features and running in a container, that's, things are complicated. You want, you know, there are like different components. Each one will be running in different image because you cannot run the demons of the control D and the, D of, of, and the demons of uh, the, the client in the same place. So we have to have like multiple ones, and they are this. So it's a complicated. We understand that. It was not meant to run in a container, but so far um, we managed to get that working. And um, and I believe I believe that um, it is it is to start as a start. It's interesting. Uh, we can um, we can show that um, these are technical details. I saw that we are not going to mention them. Different with these, and this is at the beginning. We had a lot, a lot of these problems how to handle starting a daemon, finding some technical problems. So I really could easily skip all of this because of the time. Uh, the same for Monge, problem with Monge. So I don't really care a lot about this. So here's the part that's what's important. The pod for us will become like a node. And every time you run a job, in a pod you will see a process. And this is, could grow. You can put resources up to 40 CPUs per pod. You can go beyond that. You can just double that. And you can even allocate the entire node in a pod uh, for running process. And every time you do this, like S run, run a job there, or allocate resources, you go to the pod as if it's just a complete uh, environment. We have modules inside it. We have been using spec inside the container for deploying applications and scientific applications. And I can deploy multiple of these. Now, if you don't want your container to become, to grow a lot, what we do, you just simply mount a shared file system where you have all your application and through modules, you can just easily load them. And that could simply um, use it and run applications. Okay, these are the components. I also can skip that. I don't need that. Um, for now, yeah, that's, that's where we're talking about the sharing this data, this is Scratch or Home or whatever. Even we had this integration with, with LDAP and so you can really log in as if you are logging. So behind all of this work, it was the idea is this, is that we wanted to have a complete environment in a container where you can load your application and, and really running it as if you are running in a login, login node of a bare metal. And all your job that you'll be running will be ending up in, um, in a pod that's representing your compute node. And that's behind it, the idea. We, had, we managed to get the performance in Saros, and I don't see why I cannot get this the same performance in, um, in Docker. Also, we still have some problems there. There are some hook at the top of it, and mounting, and mounting these directions should be able to, to do that. This is, this is the layout and how they will look like when you are just deploying it. I still have one minute, so I have 
uh, and that's how you will, you will see it. The same here, this is the numbering. So all of this is complicated to implement, but this is all had been available as, as template and, and Ansible. So just a simple command, you change only one text file, we have like couple, three, four parameters, and you are done. And all of this just hidden to it, hidden to it. And this is how it would look like. You know, you will see your, uh, you will see your uh, login node, control D, and these are compute nodes, and they are, all of them, they are running. And by just running this pod, you log in to the login node itself, and from there you start running SRAN and submit your jobs, where they will be ending up in the same cluster. Okay, um, all of this is made by, is, we are using Ansible in all this deployment. And these are the parameters you need just to make changes inside to be able to, uh, when, you are, when you are deploying it. I think, I think I'm out of time, so I'm going to um, stop here. And this is here an example of MPI, just showing a hello world process in three nodes. And um, that's the goal behind all this project. I think, I think we, are, we, are, we are done out of time, otherwise they will kick me out. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much.